All right, Congressman, let's bring it back here at home now. As you know, uh, the president also yeah. had some in his own party concerned about the policy on immigration. And was he faltering a bit? Was he softening on the push for a wall? Did he alleviate some doubts today by saying, whatever it takes, there's going to be a wall? Yeah, he did. But let me tell you where I'm coming from. I strongly support the wall. I, in fact, I was one of the authors of the bill back in 2006, which uh, passed the Congress calling for 700 miles of security. And it was uh, supported by many Democrats at the time. So the Democrats are being totally hypocritical. I just have a thing against government shutdowns. I think they, they end up being counterproductive. But now that we're in it, I think it's important for the president and the Democrats to come to the table, find a way to negotiate a compromise here. But to me, the wall is, is essential. I wouldn't have shut down the government over it, but it is shut down now. So let's find a way out of it, and it should be done by the Democrats conceding so, that there has to be a wall. The president is right about that. Congressman, I've got 30 seconds. What's next, then? How does the president get out of this? As you say, you support his push for the wall. You're glad he did that, but you're not excited about the government being partially shut down. Democrats right. don't seem to want to negotiate with him. No, and I think the president, uh, what they can do is make, uh, was, which I think Mick Mulvaney sort of uh, hinted at, they can make uh, some concessions as far as the total amount. And then I would also suggest that perhaps the uh, uh, Republicans could also do something on DACA. But in return for that, the Democrats will have to commit to the wall. Otherwise, the president, I don't see how he gets out of this otherwise. I don't see the end game without that. Uh, Congressman Peter King, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Ed. Thank you.